This week on Zen and Not Zen, Pro Time Edition. There's a okay. There's a there's a phrase I learned recently while I'm unpacking this whole people pleaser thing. Uh, so confidential contracts, yeah. basically. So if I'm a nice guy, I'm going to do nice things for nice people. I'm not going to be a burden on people, and so in turn, people aren't going to be a burden on me. I'm going to have nice things done to me as well. And then the the quote that I found that came from that confidential contracts idea is uh, unexpressed expectations are premeditated resentments. Yeah. So it's like with that in mind, like how many, how much of your life have you gone through expecting somebody to show up in a way just because you've, you've made this idea in your head of, of the way they should show up. And then when they don't, you get pissed about it Yeah. and you inadvertently hold them accountable for this shit. And it's like, fuck man, I've got millions of confidential contracts out there Yeah. that, that nobody knows about that. I can't even keep track of, Yeah. but I still tally. Right. <laughs> Still fucking tallying oh them, Oh my god, that is so dude, fucking you, real, dude. dude. you were updating the spreadsheets on Excel when I came in for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I keep a tally, That bitch. fucking Robin file is huge. <laughs> okay, wait. Bro time. Bro time. Bro time. <laughs> Those guys were funny. Yeah, we got them way too high. And uh, I don't remember this. They, they were talking to Landon or one of them was there. They like... I don't uh, know if I like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's interesting. Like, so I've, I've gotten high with other people in different countries or outside of my own comfort zone. Yeah. And it does seem like a different experience. It's like, it's almost like I get higher mm. and it, I don't know if it's because I'm outside of my ritual. I'm outside of like the comfort zone of people <laughs> that I usually smoke with, but there's times where I'm just like, I shouldn't be this stupid right now. Yeah. Right. Like yeah, I yeah, know yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, feel like I'm stumbling. Like I'm a 16 year old child. Again. Could it be the quality of the weed you're smoking? So it could be the quality. So yes. I thought, I, I thought about that too. Cause I was, you know, I love Amsterdam and I just was there four or five years ago or whatever, right. which fuck that was a long time ago now. Yeah, right. But I mean, I was just a, just as big a head then as I am now. And, uh, I, I felt like we got higher over there. And I think part of it is, not in the routine, but I also think we're just kind of used to all the plant, you know, maybe yeah. again, I understand this is coming from different grows and all this stuff, but it's just like, we're kind of just used to strains over here. And I understand that the UPS guy is a very effective person to get shit across the world, but you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I do feel like we're just kind of used to certain crops here. Mm. Yeah. That's an interesting point too. Uh, you know, I, I don't think we heard the episode, but, um, you know, when I sat with ayahuasca recently, yeah. Mm. um, by no means, like, so expectations are resentments waiting to happen, right? And so it, I realized I had a lot of expectations going into that ceremony. But, you know, just thinking about it afterwards, you know, even though this medicine is still created in South America, it's shipped through the DEA up here. I wonder what type of, like, if there was a, will allow you to do this, but the potency level can't exceed this. Right. Right. Whereas right. if you go to Peru or if you sit with an yeah. Ayahuascarian down in the, the, the rainforest, <laughs> yeah. they make whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. And I've heard of, heard of, I emphasize the word heard, um, of Ayahuasca being like tarry, mm. you know, like mm. thick, like molasses. And yeah. the one that I drank was like, it was like the color of a latte. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm, you know, I wonder if stuff well, like our that, too. Well, our food is so fucked. No. Yeah. Why would we oh, not yeah. think our weed really is fucked? fucked. Like, oh, anything yeah. that grows in this country yeah. is fucked. Yeah. And I don't care if you think it is pure organic. Like, the seeds, the water, the ground, everything is fucking tainted. Whoa. So, it, like... Uh, going to other countries, my stomach com- is fucked up when I come back. Right. It's when I start we, eating food here. You know again. how Chaboy gets down with junk food and oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. You know, I have to like re strategize when I go to Europe because <laughs> it's healthier junk food there. Yeah, yeah most much definitely. more modest fucking sizes. Yep, yep. So you have to buy more. But like, it's still, it's just like, it's just like they don't. They don't use artificial coloring and shit. So yeah. like their sodas are the colors that they should be. Mm-hmm. Right. Like yeah. their orange and soda their has are orange juice actual in sugar. It, which look you know? odd to us. Right. Yeah. And it's like, well, that doesn't look it tastes right. Tastes weird. Yeah. 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 It's so strange. It's better um, you shit. know, we did that episode uh, about a year ago about banned foods. You yeah. Know? And uh, and since then, like I don't I don't I, I I'm a conscious human being, but I choose what I want to be conscious about because I think if you just it's too much, you can yeah. you can it's really just lose your entire. I, I try to on talk to conscious. Tiffany and about it's a, that. It's Tiffany a is futile. very especially about like just you know the environment and just like she doesn't like to buy shit that comes in plastic, which is almost impossible. Right, right. Tell her. The entire state of Texas. Oh yeah, oh, does no. not she, recycle. She, she, she's well aware. So it's... it is futile. Well, we can get into whether or not recycling no, actually recycles. Right, but There's you know a... what I mean. Like there are, there are. There's just like you, like you were saying. Like it, it is so big, and you can do one thing. Like I was buying 
uh, vegan, like earth, um, what's it called? Earth balance yeah. buttery spread. That's like vegan yeah. buttery spread. And I thought I was like, okay, well I'm, you know, not contributing to this, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then my vegan friend comes over. She's like, oh, you can't buy that. It's full of palm oil. Like it, that's like what's ruining the rainforest. Right. So I was yep. like, you can't fucking win. Yep. Oh yeah. I, you find, can't yeah, I, I wasn't, win. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. I bought, I, I uh, was buying peanut butter like two years ago. Mm-hmm. I'm like, which one should I get? She's like, get this one. And I bought it. And I'm like, hey, look, I did a good job. And she's like, you bought the shit with palm oil. I'm like, yeah. fuck, man. But if you yeah. don't, you have to stir awkwardly your fucking peanut butter and get peanut juice all over you every time you go into it. Like, I'm yeah. not saying, like, first world problems. And that like, is a horrible so, thing. So and I would rather jam, sacrifice right? is that, is that, an orangutan. That, that's the differentiator. It, it holds it together. Palm oil holds it together so you don't stir it. Natural ones have that separation. Yeah, so you that, get that, that atoms. Stirring, right? That yeah. atoms. But, you know, like, there's, there, you can. I feel like if you are passionate about something and you want to follow it yourself, then that's great. Right? Yeah. Follow that. But if, you, if we get too broad spectrum and then it's like, you should just go live in a cave in the Himalayas. Right. Yeah. And that's not the thing, right? We're part of society. And I think that's where people get kind of lost in this whole kind of idea of enlightenment, woke, you know, whatever that idea is that you mm-hmm. have, that you've defined oh, honey, as part of woke. your journey. Right. <laughs> It's it, you're, you're still a part of this fucking society, yeah. right? And so the farther you remove yourself, the farther you're removing yourself from the journey of your soul, right. in theory, right? Yeah. So it's finding a way to accept what you can accept, not accept and change what you can change, yeah. but also just feeling like you find a space for yourself to belong. It's like the serenity prayer, you know, yeah. accept the things I cannot change, current yep. the things I can, wisdom, know the difference, right? It's that same idea. So... It, but it's for you. That's the thing. That's where people get fucked up. Just because this worked for me doesn't right. mean it's going to work for you. Yeah. So you have might might have found your your variety of happiness that works for you, and then you try to shove it down other people's throat. Mm-hmm. That's where we get sideways, right? right? Let yeah. that person find their own happiness. Yeah. They can look to you as an example if they wish. Yeah. To say, oh. Kinsey's found some happiness like that. I yeah. kind of share a similar kind of mindset. Yeah. Maybe that might work for me. And then I start that path and I find it diverting into my own unique path. Yeah. Good for you. That's well, why you're an individual. Yeah. It it's com- the change that inspires you to maybe look at it. It's something a different way, but it doesn't have to be the exact way someone else it is looking It comes at up it. every now and then at my <laughs> job and also just with my circle of friends because I quit drinking and most of my friends have not. Uh, and some to varying degrees may or may not have some issues with it, you right. know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, everyone's like, well, Robin, you quit drinking, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, cool. But I also lean pretty heavily on ganj. I, yeah. I leaned on it before it quit drinking, but I definitely lean on it now. And that's just what I do. And that's kind of what I, you know. But it's just like, that works for fucking me. Yeah. So, like, I want to be very clear about all this shit. Yeah, you could just try to, like, quit drinking and just go become a pothead. And it's like, yeah, that might work for, like, a week. Right. Uh, well, it's you funny know. you say that because my friend at work, um, she was, she has really bad migraines. And, um one of the other girls that works there were like, oh, let's go get you some She goes, one time I, I smoked weed before I went to bed and I, it was the first day I didn't wake up with a migraine and maybe I should stop drinking less and start smoking weed more. And I was like, okay, great. Yeah, so we yeah. took her to the weed store. Yeah. We got her some weed. And then I, w- I asked her yesterday, I was like, how's it going? She goes, I can't smoke weed. She goes, I just turn into an anxious, spiral, <laughs> yeah. neurotic yeah, mess. That too, yeah. And she goes, and I, I want it to work so bad because so many other people have found so many benefits and it really helps with their anxiety and it just makes mine worse. And I just feel like that's just not. So it's like, this is the perfect example I didn't of something even go working. There with that. Yeah, yeah something even working about, for something yeah. and it's not working for you. Yeah. So it doesn't mean it has to. Right. <clears throat> well, weed these days is so fucking strong. If you yeah. don't have some tolerance going into it, like, yeah. Yeah. you're it's, going balls to she got well, a cart. Like, she it's didn't get like, joints. Like she's buying uh, carts, right. and I was like, "Girl, it's so well, it's funny." Almost like CBD weed is, or CBD uh, flower is now like what old weed used to yeah. be the potency so, of. So, you know, like. and she, I, I was the one who talked her out of CBD because, like, you don't want CBD. It doesn't do anything. Like, go for yeah. the high end. Right. Go for the high end indica. <laughs> yeah, it's really gonna knock my, you my, on your my ass. My friends Adam and Robin use these, <laughs> and this will be great for you. <laughs> First timer. That poor bitch probably needed some CBD, and I was like, no, 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 no. Well, it's interesting because I mean, I, I see that shit at the stores now, and it's like literally branded as like low THC. Like yeah. this will barely get you high or not at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm just like, well, cool. Uh, we <laughs> should just fucking put that behind a curtain because that's not why the fuck I'm here. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, there. I think I might have shared this before, but, you know, the, the, the few times I've been back to Texas now and, uh, and been able to smoke that weed again, which is considerably not as good. Still, as, is it medical down in Texas? No, they are very fuck, far away Fuck, they're so everything. backwards it's on still, that shit. It still stems and seeds. So Dude, I, still, Florida. I mean, you can find better weed down there, but oh. it's still shit. <sighs> But I got everywhere a, in Florida. I got a sack everywhere. from a buddy, and, uh, and it was like that old weed. And it actually, it felt really kind of good to be 
just kind of high. Yeah, oh, and come not on. like, and not that like, like, cause I'm high right now. Like, that I'm just function- guitar I'm a functional solo. solo. Yeah, yeah. So, uh-huh. right? <laughs> but yeah, it was just interesting to be like, just kind of high, and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I remember this. Oh, oh like, just do, well, it's like right. people doing spliffs and shit. I mean, do you? I mean, people mixing tobacco with weed. I've, I've uh, never, I have friends from Europe that do that. I never. I yeah, I, yeah, I only knew one they, person from them, Red Hook that did that. That was, who introduced me to a spliff, yeah. and then I, I yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd rather not. But yeah, I'll no. tolerate if that. Yeah, is. no, it was definitely happened to me a couple times a year. I'm like, hey, that's what said you're smoking weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so because you just got back from the Sedona. Yes. And there was like a big ass full moon. Yeah. Ver- so that's big Arizona. Ver- yeah. Nor- <laughs> Vortex <laughs> yeah. Central. Vortex man. Central. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had some crazy shit that happened there. I I had a interaction with someone who I had not seen in. Well, I, I lied. I said since 2020, but I actually ran into her a year ago, almost to the day that I saw her in Sedona. But huh. I was in a really bad headspace. I was taking care of my grandma who's passing away. And she was at the restaurant. I was picking up to go food. And I was just like, ah, okay, bye. You know, just didn't want to say anything. So this woman was my eighth grade teacher. I had kept in touch with her, you know, since eighth grade. She kind of was my one of my surrogate moms that I had kind of uh, collected over the years. Um, and she was a really important person to me for a very long time. Yeah. 2020 rolls around, find out she's voting for Trump and my world is fucking shattered and I feel like I'm fighting for my fucking life and everyone around me is just doesn't give a shit. So I say very unkind things to her and write her off completely, you know, just fucking nuke a bridge, done. Yeah. Um, and then, so we're in Sedona, I'm there with my in-laws, my dad's coming up, my aunt's coming up and we're kind of using this as like a healing, like, Hey, we're going to kind of. Uh, get all to get together kind of honor my grandma because we all hadn't seen each other since she passed and Sedona was one of her favorite places so it was already kind of a healing journey mm-hmm. <clears> that our healing trip that we're there so I'm supposed to meet up well, I had my, my dad had just left my aunt was supposed to come back up from Phoenix on Thursday she had something uh my one of my cousins crashed his car mm-hmm. and so it kind of fucked up the plans for the day so she's like I'm not coming up and I go okay great well Manny's like what do you want to do I was like uh let's go to the pool house and we, we go down the pool house, last minute kind of a decision, and we were there for maybe five, What's ten minutes. Uh, it's just this indoor, it was like an indoor outdoor pool. Like we stayed at this place that was kind of like, almost, it, it was a hotel slash timeshare place. So it had villas, like people uh, could and, rent for timeshare. Entertainment shares. shit. Yeah, so and like a game room and a, a library. And, and, yeah, yeah. yeah, very, yeah, kind cool. of like that. So, um, so we're, we're in the pool house. There is nobody there. We are the only ones fucking there. And all of a sudden I hear people coming in the pool house and I hear a voice and I go, there's no fucking way. There is no, I know her voice instantly. Yeah. And I look and I see her profile and I immediately turn back around and I put my like hands over my, over my mouth. Cause like, I was just like, there's, this is spooky meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause also like, I'm very aware of how I left things. So I don't know if she's super pissed. Right. I, you know, I don't know how awkward this is going to be. Every interaction I've ever had in my family, when I fucked up, it is, I'm going to hold this over your head for the rest of your life yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Am I in a headspace? I want to address that right now. I'm still kind of overwhelmed. So they're in the pool house for maybe 90 seconds. She starts walking out and something inside of me goes, say something. And so I scream her last she name. She hasn't seen you. She hasn't seen me. Yeah, I, yeah. I've been turning my yeah, body yeah, the doing, entire time. Yeah, you're doing the fucking hiding even, behind the corn pops. Her husband, yeah. and, uh, her husband addressed us and was like, hey, is the jacuzzi hot enough? And I kind of turn my back and I go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Like, and, oh, and you know, straight yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm just doing my best to just hide my face. <laughs> and so she's almost out the door and I scream her name. And then she looks at me and I say her name again and I can see it register all of a sudden and her face just lights up and she goes, oh my God. And she runs over to me and I'm soaking wet and I was like, I'm soaking wet. She goes, I don't give a fuck. I'm grabbing a towel. So she wraps herself in a towel. I get a towel. We hug. And... I'm still kind of awkward about it because, and the other person that was there was another teacher from that same school that my sister had. So, and you know, her husband's looking at me sideways, which is, I know (laughs) like conversations have been had about me and, uh, about what I had said. There's context. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't want to make it too fake or awkward. You know, I'm a little spooked to be honest and she's just being really kind. And, and, and I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm staying in this room and she goes, oh my God, we're staying 10 doors down from you. And I was like, we're in this room. And I go, oh my God. 
And so she leaves, and the rest of the day, I'm fucking not able to yeah, think fine. about anything else. Well, yeah. Like, it, I was like, this is so, like, I've run into her before in Oro, Oro Valley, but, which is not weird because I can't go home without running into somebody. So, yeah. whatever. But to be at Sedona in the same weekend, the same fucking hotel, <laughs> and the same 90 seconds, like, she was not coming to hang out at the pool. She just happened to say, like, oh, yeah, our friend's... Haven't been here before. We're just going to walk through here to get to our hotel room. There's no accident. It, it was too big. Yeah. It was just too big. And and for it to be a full moon in the vortex with my grandmother and everything, and I was just like, I need to address this. So it's like 10 o'clock at night, and I'm laying awake, and I was like, I can't leave this. We're leaving the next day. And um, and so I, I wrote her a note and was just like, I can't get over this. And I just – I think this was the universe giving me a sign to – tell you thank you for everything that you did for me for so many years and and how much you meant to me and I just I hope you have a great trip and I just kind of left it open I didn't oh wow I didn't want to you know say like hey here's my number call me let's reconnect because like I wasn't sure how I felt about it so I just kind of wanted to leave it open-ended if she wanted to you know address me that's fine but if she didn't she could walk away and not have to talk to me ever again so I leave the note in the what I couldn't quite remember her her hotel room number, so I just kind of was a shot in the dark, and it turned out to be the right one. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I'm checking. I'm Did the che- whole under the door thing? Yeah, yeah I Ugh. stuck it in the door, and and then I go back, and I'm you know pacing the room, and Mandy's like, she'll get it. Like if this has happened, like even if it's the wrong room number, if I got a note like this, I would go up to the front desk and be like, hey, someone in this hotel has this name. You need to get it to them. Right. So. Anyway. Adam and I would roll joints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks. Hey, somebody rolled a rolling chair underneath the table. <laughs> <laughs> Score. <laughs> um, and so, I, you know, I'm up till like five o'clock in the morning because I just can't sleep. Because I'm also like, if she does get back to me, okay, I'm going to have this to say. I'm going to have this to justify this action. I'm yeah. going to have this to explain my behavior because I'm already yeah. going through everything because yeah. that's how I grew up. Like, yeah. if you fuck up, you need to tell me, break everything down mm-hmm. on why you did it and you need to fucking grovel. Right. So I'm preparing mentally for that yep. she, I get a message so I don't have her number I have blocked her on all social media so I unblock her just in case she wants to get in touch with me and so she so I've heard nothing from her and it's like midnight and I message her on Instagram just to reach out to be like hey I left a note at this door I wasn't sure if it was yours <laughs> Um, hope it hope it finds its way to you. And she goes, I got your note, and it really made my day, and it made my night. And she goes, I'd really like to see you tomorrow before you leave. And I was like, great. So she's at one end of the row. I'm at the end. so we're we're bookending this row of villas that we're staying in. Yeah. And in the middle, there is a tiny little table and a grass knoll. <laughs> so we literally are on opposite ends of the spectrum, and we meet in the middle. And we she comes down out of her condo we're wearing the same fucking outfit we're both in (laughs) jeans and a white sweatshirt and she just is just full of love like there was not an awkward moment it was like no time had passed it was like nothing had happened and I am prepared to grovel and to justify and whatever and she's just kind of starts off just like it's okay it's okay don't worry about it. Like it's, how are you doing? Right. You look really happy. you look really good. You know, tell me everything about what's going on with you. And then all of a sudden we're sitting in this little hammock or not hammock, a little swing chair thing. And a hummingbird comes uh. by and she goes, you know, that's my mom. And I, she goes, my mom passed in 2020. So I was like, so I probably dropped this bomb on her. And then her mom, which I didn't even know was right. sick, died. And, and she was like, yeah, this is a special moment, isn't it? And mm. I was like, yeah. Oh, shit. And then she... I start crying, and I was like, I just wanted to thank you for everything. Yeah. She goes, I always knew. You didn't have to tell me. You know, I always oh. knew. And it was just it was just a beautiful meetup, and it felt like she was kind of speaking from the universe through her mouth of like, hey, man, it's, it's all right. Yep. It's okay. Like this self-forgiveness moment, this total – you know, preparing to have my dukes up, to preparing to defend myself, and just the universe being like, "Hey, man, you don't even need to do that. Yep. You're good." And and I and it was it was about our relationship, but it was so much about all the relationships in my life of, of that like you need to just put your dukes down, like, yep. and just let everybody be, let yourself be. And the thing that shocked me most, I think, was that she showed me this unconditional love and grace that I was unable to extend to her. And that is so true for a lot of Mm. relationships I have in my life. So it was just a nice reminder to be like, this thing that I had done in 2020 affected a lot of relationships I have. And so, and it has, 
you know, it's just kind of been this gray cloud that I feel like I can't escape. And I yeah. just had this one moment of just explosion of emotions in, you know, all directions. And I've been feeling it, repercussions of it for four years. Right. And thinking that it's this big deal in my brain. And then there's just this one person that reminds me that it's like, hey, man, we, the people that know get that it was, we knew it wasn't about what it was about. Right. Like, you know, she had been with me through all of my family trauma stuff. And she's like, yeah, I know you went through a lot. She goes, I know that. You don't, it's okay. Yeah. Don't worry about it. And I was just at the airport just being like, oh, but I didn't deserve this <laughs> kindness. And just, so it was just a purely, like, and it happened on the Virgo full moon. So yeah. it was just all these things like this vortex of infinite possibilities coming together for this one moment that just kind of broke open yeah. so much shit for me. That's beautiful. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah. You know, and it's those, those little Easter eggs that are out there for you to find. Totally. You know, and it's, you know, when you have moments like that where, where you feel that gentle, like, nudge yeah that little push like just say your name yeah see what happens it was and it was something inside me was just do it yeah do it now Mm -hmm. yeah and it's you know it's easy you would have fucking regret because you you probably wouldn't have fucking seen her for the rest of that and i didn't i didn't run into her tried to like walk around with a fucking drink and just be like hopefully i'll run into her and then what the fuck are you doing you're trying to holler at a chick this is the moment this is 1987 (laughs) and the funny thing was is the universe gave me a moment the year prior and i didn't take up on it like i should have because Mm. i wasn't in the right headspace but the universe knew that like because i was in such a good place when i was in power the podcast it was just like (laughs) i felt good i felt open i felt relaxed i felt i was like this this is the redo moment that i should have had back then and it we were in a restaurant like i was waiting you know my people were in the car waiting for me i was picking up food it just wasn't the right moment so it, it 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 the universe was like cool that didn't work i'm gonna give you another opportunity and i have I have had other people in my life that I've had to feel like I've had to like make an apology to or Mm. or justify things. And the people, the universe gives me these opportunities like with my dad or with this woman that I met, like that it wasn't forced. It was just like, Hey, I'm going to give you this opportunity, Mm. but it, but you have to go the next step, say her name or write a note or, or, you know, address it with my dad or whatever. And the ones that I have felt forced to on someone else's timeline to apologize, justify, whatever, those have not ended well. Right. So this was a good reminder to mm. be like, hey, the relationships that are going to come back to you, the universe will give you that opportunity, but it's your, you have to take the action when that opportunity meets the moment. Right. So you fucking can bring the fucking <clears throat> horse to the river or whatever. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. I had a, a buddy tell me one time, uh, might have been Jeff, but uh, basically said with the right person, you have infinite second chances. A thousand percent. You know, and, and that's, it, it's. <sighs> is that a good thing? I think it is because I, like if you, if you need somebody to help hold space for you while you grow. Okay. Yeah, it's, if, that's... If, if your actions keep pushing people away, but you know that you're finding growth or yeah. there's some, there's some reason like it's, it's hard, like, you know, being, um, the friend that is always helping the person out that keeps self-destructing. Yeah. It's hard to be, yeah. you know, but there's also, you know, don't, don't put yourself on that cross, you know, being that friend all the time. But if you have the space to hold and you can do that, you know, there's a reason why that person keeps coming back to you. And there's a reason why and eventually that, will click you well know, and it's not it that like she she wasn't asking anything of me and i wasn't asking anything of her right. it was a moment of like uh, we have uh, we have acknowledged this connection you know i'm here for you but like w- with what you're saying like being that friend that is always coming to aid there's a difference between having boundaries and being open loving kind right being, you know, there for someone. And then there's a difference between that and exuding emotional, physical labor for this person that keeps doing the same kind of thing. There's a difference between being, noticing when someone has had a bad moment and that's all it was. Yeah. Yeah. Or what comes to mind is you went through, you know, with using you as an example for people, I mean, shit, I've known you now for 10 years, but it's like, and I wasn't, you know, I was, wasn't, hanging out with you hardcore in 2020 but right. you know it was on social media at the time and yeah. whatnot and i was aware of some of this stuff but it's just like the sample size is so much greater than that you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying and i think a lot of the people that even you know you may have scorched earth for yeah. better or for worse a lot of people are like cool well 
that's not necessarily always, you know, I, I do hate the argument like, oh, I'm sorry about my friend, he's drunk. I'm like, no, your friend's a fucking asshole. Right. Now he's right. a drunk right. asshole. Right. Right. Same person, just drunk asshole. But, like, you know, you're not that kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I think that's it was a part truly of it too. a bad you, moment. And w- when you were texting uh, us about topics for today and you had said something about the the downside of being too kind. That's, that's what I was just going to say. I guess. This was my downside of being too kind. Yeah. Because I... And there's a difference between like being kind in a genuine, I, I'm good with myself right. kind of yes. a thing. And I just exude kindness because I feel kindness towards myself. My kindness came from a people pleasing. Mm-hmm. If I can make it right with everybody or make everyone else yeah. happy, then I can I can make myself happy. Right. I was doing yeah, it in the opposite work. way. And what that does is create a fucking nuke within me that that is ticking constantly. And it just boomed yeah. at this moment. Yep. And it was 30 years of buildup of rage yeah. and anger yeah. that I did not know how to express in a healthy way. So it just fucking exploded. And like Mandy, her and I have had a conversation about it. She's like, yeah, dude, like I didn't know who you were during that time, but I know you needed to for this thing to happen. You just yeah. needed to fucking... And, and I am... Also, you need, it's out now, though. It's like, out now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, like, and I have become such a different person from that moment that would not have happened if that did not happen. Yeah. So yeah. as much... So it was kind of a nice moment to have with this woman that it was just like... It was my chance to release that shame, that right. that past anger, these past this past person I was, and to just have her look at me and be like, hey, it's okay. Let's yeah. start here. You are this person. Well, it's now. also yeah, kind of validating kind of how far you've come, and right? Like all the kind of the the, the you know because yeah, it's we when we were talking doing. I don't know if we've released the one about where we talk about kind of you know regrets and all that. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, and I'm just like, hey man, nobody. I remember bringing this up to you. I mean, nobody's fucking batting a thousand. I'm not gonna sit here right. and act like I've done everything right in my life. And of course, I would go back and maybe you know, but it's like, and you kind of push back. In a, in a way where it's like, no, these those experiences made who I am. Right, mm-hmm. yep. And, you know, I think there's, you know, a lot of humility in that, yeah. you know, and I, I think that's an important lesson. Yeah. I was watching a video, too, of a guy, it was, it was on TikTok, but he was talking nice. about how uh, he he used to care a lot what people think, and that, that was me. And he was like, I cared about what they thought about me, and it was because I was angry at myself so I made a version of them that was also angry at me but it was but it was my brain's version of making somebody else mean as an excuse to be mean to myself right so now and he goes so now I know when my friend is mad or acting weird or you know doing something not right I can see that they are angry with themselves and they're using me as an excuse Mm. to be to to be unkind to themselves and I feel like that's not where I was four years ago but that's where I am now so like these things that were so fucking important so black and white to me so right and wrong so like they I don't have that same energy towards these topics that I used to or these people or like looking at situations where it's something like just oh they make me so mad I can now look at this person and be like I don't really care that much you know like they're just on their own journey. I'm on my own. I don't have the energy for that we anymore. We don't agree on everything. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. But it like doesn't like, irk me, you know? No, and no. so it is so if I'm capable of that, I'm giving other people the grace of being capable of that as well. Right. And they can either mend a bridge with me or not, but we're both just gonna be I wish nothing the best for everybody. So there are people that are the universe is gonna bring back to me that we might have a relationship great. There's going to be people that it, it's it's over, and maybe that was the way for my you know universe to be like, hey, this this relationship wasn't really working out for you anyway. It right. probably could have ended better, but we got rid of that anyway. Yep. So it all is good in the end. Yeah, it's I I think of like you know when you have a negative experience, it fucking you know because I'm still in restaurants and hospitality, and these people are fucking pricks for whatever the fuck, right. and yeah. I'm just like, well, okay, I'm like, and usually I have to say this to someone who hasn't done it as long, but I'm just like. That person was pissed off when they walked in. Yes. You could have pulled their fucking child from a burning car and they would still be upset because they got fucking charcoal <laughs> on their shoes. Like, yeah. oh they, God, they're going to yeah. fucking go home to their shitty fucking miserable life and yeah. you're going to be fine. Don't let any of that fucking dictate the rest of your day because then those assholes have won. Yeah. Right, you right. know, and that's easier said than done because you it's and I've worked together and I'll, I'll do a bit and I'll fucking go off on the expo line for like 
four minutes to be funny and then I'm fine. Yeah. But, but that is that's the expulsion of the energy though. Yeah. I mean, we need that. It's like it's like the, the tiger that chases the antelope and the antelope gets away and then when the antelope feels safe you'll see it shake. Because mm-hmm. it has that pent up energy, it just needs to get it out. Yeah. And so like that's actually a really good practice to uh, to be able to get some of that energy out, you know, yeah. it's it's not like if you're being like totally vehement about it. You oh know? no, but it's well, just I like mean, it's I mean yeah, you guys yeah. know exactly. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I love it's, your it's it's right. the yeah. walk and venting of like fuck that yeah. guy, oh, fuck, oh, just, fuck just, eighteen, just, all right, all right. Can I get you anything else? Yeah, yeah, no, no, but it's just literally like no, no, no. I'm doing a bit. I'll be fine in about yeah, yeah. forty five seconds. Yeah. I got a couple <laughs> more. I need a couple more things of material that I worked up between the hot water. I got my type five stand up right now. Let me, yeah, let me. Have this. Well, and I always have to remind myself the people that are shitty to customer service people, we are the lowest rungs. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. So, what that says to me is that you are the lowest rung in your life. So, this is your opportunity to have something over somebody. So, yeah. someone is making you feel the way you're trying to make me feel right now at home or at work or whatever. So I am just going to let that be what it is because I know this moment is not about me. I've given you every fucking thing you've asked for. I have accommodated every request you have. I have done it with a smile. I have not given you attitude. So this has nothing to do with me. It doesn't make it any less fucking annoying. Still sucks, but yeah. Still sucks, but it has nothing to do with you. Back to the regurts thing. I do actually regurt not like refusing service about three times Mm because I could have. Yeah. And, like, been justified in doing so. Yeah. And just because of force of habit and, like, kind of the nature of just say yes, people pleasing and all that. And I'm like... But isn't it the easy route sometimes to just get them out? It is, but it's, like, literally, like, you know, I mean... But that's that's an example of, like, no, I should have just been, like, fuck you and fuck you. And I could have said, fuck you. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you know what I'm saying? Totally, yeah. I've been, like... Yeah, I said that. Yeah. Fucking block letters. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. All I caps. A, I have a recent example of, so I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to stop being a people pleaser. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, a, hard it's, it's a hard habit it's a hard to hard break, journey, right? baby. Yeah, yeah. Got a lot of things to work on, but, yeah. um, but okay. So I've been teaching yoga for almost 10 years now and I, I'm, I love what I do. I've got a specific style that I teach, right? I like loud music. I like hot, sweaty classes, like big movements, if that's the, the style that it's called for. You yeah. know what you want. Yeah. I, no, I love, Go like, in I'll the play jungle, the roof. Baby. I'll play you know, Rage Against the Machine, like all yeah. kinds of shit. I just love, I love crafting cool, fun classes. And I get it. My voice is monotone. Sometimes my voice gets lost in the music because yeah. I get really excited and turn the music up too loud. But People, I, I found my following. Right? Right. People, I found the group that likes what my brand is, right? Right. Um, and so sometimes I'll get some talk afterwards and be like, hey, you know, didn't, uh, couldn't hear you too well. You know, music was a little loud. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, and I placate to them. Right. So I had a young lady uh, this last Sunday, same deal, comes out and she's like, hey, uh, loved your class, but uh, the music was a little too loud. I, I couldn't hear you. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, that's um, that's the style of yoga that I do. Um, I, I like it loud and like it sweaty. You know, it's fun though. Unapologetic, you know? unapologetic uh, for yep. your yeah. And, and I was trying my hardest to not apologize and not, yeah. but not be yeah. a dick and not right. like be like that's what I do. You right. know. Yeah. Um, uh, and I was like, well, but you know, fuck the, you, I won't do what you tell me. <laughs> yeah. uh, the owner of the studio allows us to teach as we wish, so there's yeah. a bunch of different t- teachers that approach it in a different way. Yeah. you're welcome to try them out. She's like, well, I went to a teacher's class the other day, and it was like soft music, and I'm like, cool. That's that person's style. Yeah. Now you know my style. Right. Yeah. And and I could kind of tell at the same time that maybe she was having this opportunity for her to actually speak her mind in a in a way that maybe she hasn't before. Right. And we were both like having this moment of like, I'm going to, I need to say what I need to say and I'm going to try to do it as nice as I can and unapologetically. Right. But, but I don't have an expectation. I just want to say it. Yeah. And so like we met at that moment and it was almost like I didn't apologize. You didn't get what you wanted. Get what you wanted, but you were able to speak your mind. Yeah. And we both are smiling. Right. And yeah. then it was just like, okay, well, cool. Have a good okay, day. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Well, there, it's that. It's that. There's no black and white. Neither of you are wrong. Right. Well, so yeah, it's neither not the of you are wrong. Always right. Kind of idea right. which we were raised in. That's right. bullshit. Right? But, so, but what you said with like her having like maybe she had been sitting this whole class of having all these you know unsatisfying oh. moments and never saying anything because she is also having a people pleasing moment where yep. she's just like great class and I'm not going to say anything I wasn't happy and exactly. whatever so like what a beautiful gray area moment yeah. for you both it was great yeah that's very rad. cool there's a okay there's a there's a phrase I learned recently while I'm unpacking this whole people pleaser thing it's um 
uh, unex- <laughs> unexpressed expectations. Mm. Uh, so confidential contracts, yeah. basically. So if I'm a nice guy... I'm going to do nice things for nice people. I'm not going to be a burden on people. And so in turn, people aren't going to be a burden on me. I'm going to have nice things done to me as well. And when people don't see that being played out, then what you were talking about earlier, that vehement fucking nasty person inside starts to come out, Mm -hmm. whether it's around people in public and in in violent outbursts or like myself, what I found myself doing is taking it out on the people that I love the most. Oh yeah. You know, like I can't get what I want from the world, from the way that I'm acting. So clearly there's something wrong with me. How can you love me? Right. This is bullshit. You're fucking in love with an asshole. So clearly you're an asshole. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's this vicious fucking cycle. So, and then the, the quote that I found that came from that confidential contracts idea is, uh, unexpressed expectations are premeditated resentments. Yeah. So it's like, how many times have I gone through the world? And COVID was a beautiful example. When I think back, I wore a mask because I was doing what I felt was right. And so when I saw somebody not wearing a mask, uh-huh. they broke the contract that I made in my oh, head with yeah. humanity yep. that nobody else knew of. I'm fucking doing this. Right. I'm doing this yeah. for the good of humanity. You know, and that's, fucking that, dick that's for being so... Good example. Yeah, right? that is absolutely... And, and that's just a complete story in your head. Right. That person has their own reason for whatever reason they've got to do whatever they're doing. This Masks is example, right. mask, suck. Mask, yeah. right? But with that in mind, like... How many? How much of your life have you gone through expecting somebody to show up in a way just because you you've made this idea in your head of of the way they should show up, and then when they don't, you get pissed about it, yeah, and you inadvertently hold them accountable for this shit, and it's like, fuck, man, I've got millions of confidential contracts out there, yeah, that that nobody knows about that I can't even keep track of, yeah, but I still tally, right. <laughs> Still fucking tallying oh them, motherfuckers. Oh my god, that is so dude, fucking real, you, dude. Dude, you were updating the spreadsheets on Excel when I came in for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I keep a tally. That bitch. fucking Robin file is huge. <laughs> okay, wait. Quick, quick side tangent. Okay, I found it. I, I heard a. Uh, uh, okay, so in, in Instagram and TikTok, the bunch of people have been the internet's been going crazy with like timeline movie um, overlaps. Uh huh. Okay, so I saw one recently. Steve Buscemi. Okay. Ugh. Yeah, Steve Buscemi from Billy Madison. Yeah. Who okay. Billy Madison calls and apologizes. Yeah, right. Danny McGrath. Yeah. Crosses Danny, right? right. Yeah. Crosses his name off. Goes, yeah. Other hey. people on that list. Fast forward, Con Air, right? Mm-hmm. Danny gets caught because he killed all those people on his list. Yeah. The, the, he the, shows up as Steve Buscemi and Con Air. He's similar character, oh right? Kind of quiet, kind of creepy, oh right? Oh, my God. He ends up getting away. Everybody thinks he dies, but he got away. Yeah, did Fast, he ha- hang out with the, the hung girl, out with the little girl, girl then he went to Vegas, cool. right? right? Then he went to Vegas, right? Fast forward, Big Lebowski. Oh my God, Donnie, not Danny. Donnie. Donnie. He changed his name just slightly. He's very quiet. He doesn't really have a backstory. And this is what the the, the internet really shows. What was the was, character name in the second one again? Uh, what was the second movie you're talking uh, about? Conair. I can't remember his name. He had some funny like killer he was, name. He was a weird fucking crazy guy. Yeah, right? yeah. Hannibal Lecter mask. Yep. And so in the in the Big Lebowski, every time Donnie's bowling, he's wearing somebody else's bowling shirt. It has a different name on it. And so the theory is those are all the people that he killed. Oh my god! And so I'm like, oh my god, that is a beautiful. Oh my god! Thank you for stringing that together for me. Yes. I love that. Yeah. I'll where do where where does where does that weird movie Fargo fit into? It's like <laughs> I got shot yeah. in the fucking face. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, thanks That's, for entertaining that tangent. No, for me. I fucking love that. <laughs> god, I need to rewatch. Oh, speaking of Nick Cage, I was at work last night. I'm like, hey man, talking to a regular. I'm like, hey man, did you have a good weekend? He's like, yeah, man, we did a we did a cage a thon. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I literally thought like cages, a like UFC. steel cage yeah, or some right. shit. And he's like, no man, uh, watched a bunch of Nick Cage movies. I'm like, oh fuck yeah, I'm like, you know, thinking. And he's like, which ones did you watch? He's like. Oh, uh, well, we start off with uh, Leaving Las Vegas. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, you started man. with the Leaving Las Vegas? The saddest movie of all time. Fucking, Fucking hell. Leaving Las Vegas. Jesus Christ, man. Like, his, not... his Renfield, he, when he... That, that movie great. is so fucking good. It looked really good. Like it yeah. is so one of the best kill scenes I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I've got a I, I went through a fuck Nick Cage phase where I'm like, I just can't with him. I I, I, I respect don't really the fuck him, out of him, dude. I don't really I've I've seen him get interviewed more recently and I've actually been really impressed with the way he comes across. Totally. Because he's genuine as yeah, fuck yeah. and he knows he's weird, but he don't care. Yeah, he's accepted it. He's he found don't a way care. To yeah. shit, right? And and he's I, done some really good shit. And yeah, he, he, he has done some good shit, and he's done some shit shit, and he doesn't care yeah, if I you haven't think it's seen good or not. Yeah, I have Season of the Witch, you know, I'm not going to fuck I saw that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you the fucking, uh, the fucking, fucking Wicker, Wicker Man? His Wicker, Wicker Man? 
was fucking crazy. Well, so man. so I mean, the, the, there's only a couple Nick Cage movies I really. I just recently Tiffany hadn't seen The Rock, so I'm like, oh, oh yeah, fucking classic. The Rock Cage. is so good. She did. She did rightfully. So she's just like about like halfway through. She's like, there's no fucking way Ed Harris is gonna do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like like she's just like there's no fucking way this guy is gonna go fucking tear gas. San Francisco, yeah. Like, yeah. And like you know, not towards Ed Harris. Yeah. Well, no, just like I <laughs> mean, Ed O'Neill, but yeah, not, yeah, Ed not Ed Harris. Harris. <laughs> fucking yeah. See, yeah, fuck. Maybe the bad guy off the first Blade, but not yeah, not Ed Stephen Dorf. <laughs> Stephen Dorf. God, had did to pull, see had to made a comeback. Had to pull that one out. God. But I mean, did you guys ever see Lord of War? That guy. Yes. That guy that we ended up trading for Brittany, Brittany Griner. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. That movie. Lord of yeah. War. That was. Good. It was about the weapon that. weapons traders. The true story. I enjoyed oh, that one. Yeah, Matchstick that Man was good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Matchstick Man was the good. The unbearable weight of being famous, or the unbearable weight of something. It, it's uh, it's got Pedro Pascal, Nick Cage, and the movie. Nick Cage plays Nick Cage. Okay. So it's about them going after Nick Cage because he's he's super fame. I can't even remember the whole plot of the story, but I I remember watching this movie and I if there was ever a question that I respected the fuck out of Nick Cage, it was over after I watched that movie because I was like the fact that he can make fun of himself because yeah. oh, yeah, uh, he played special. a hyper uh, like a caricature version of himself. And it was so well done and so funny and so good. And he was so in on the joke where yeah. I was like, you got me forever Did now. Did you ever see Cage. Valley Girl? I never saw Valley Girl. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's uh, canon. And, uh, ra- <laughs> yeah. Raising Arizona. Oh, well, yeah. That's, yeah. I, I, I fell that's asleep. I've, I've fallen asleep to that yeah. one numerous yeah. times. But it's like Chuck Norris is in on his joke now, too. Yeah. You know? Dude, it's that like, motherfucker's that's... like 83 or some shit. You know who's not wow. in on the joke? Steven Seagal. Yeah. That's he's... the difference. Oh, dude. Well, you he know just what I like mean? lives in Russia. Have you seen that video of like him like throwing opponents <laughs> in some judo seminar? <laughs> God. Oh, dude. It's and great. It's yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, dude, dude. The guy weighs Whoa. like over yeah. 300 Whoa. pounds. Oh, you yeah. got me yeah. this time. It, it's very reminiscent of those... Uh, those Preachers that are like knocking you over with oh, the yeah, fucking yeah, power yeah, of yeah. God. It's uh-huh. very, <laughs> very that. On, on par with that. <laughs> it's like so, that uh, Key and Peel sketch. Grapple and tackle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the strip mall yeah. Jujitsu uh, complex. <laughs> we are here to grapple and tackle. <laughs> That's a fucking amazing I have sketch. Not seen that oh one. my god, it's great. He's got a bunch of like, it's like '90s style, very like choppy editing, and he's got a bunch of uh, uh, women. That's all his students Opponents? are just women. And he just <laughs> oh, like, God. first you grapple, and then you tackle. And then he like, just takes them all down. It's just it's classic so Keith deal. It's fantastic. I love it. Uh, there's one thing that came up uh, in my journey through this uh, that I've come through with this nice guy shit too. Um, it's that that brutal stop to being the nice guy. The cold turkey stop. And then... I'm just honest. Yeah. Okay. I'm just honest. It's so, I'm not, it's, I'm almost there, but it is so hard for me. So, well, people, no, but it's what I'm that saying last though hurdle. Is, is, well, what I'm saying though is, is you get to that point and it becomes a nuisance. And then you start, well, fuck that. Here's my opinion on that. It's just vehement. It's just coming out. Yeah. I'm not going to ask if you want my opinion. Here it just fucking comes, right? Mm-hmm. I'm tired of being the nice guy. I've got shit to say. Here right. it fucking comes. Right. You haven't thought about it because now you're angry because you feel like you've been stepped on your entire life, right? Yeah. You've got some opinions that might have stewed back there, but you haven't really given full breath. Maybe even have a conversation with them. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have an opportunity and here comes that thought. Right. Right. And then you just back up your, ign- well, your perceived ignorance with some kind of like, you know, just digging the heels in. Right. Yeah. That's the black this and white is, mentality. This is the new me. Yeah. This is the new me. This is how I am. If you don't like it, fuck you. Right, you, you can know? get the fuck out of my when, life. In my yeah, early 20s, the... when I was a, maybe a bit rougher around the edges, you guys yeah. met me in my early 30s. Yep. Uh, I used to call that new and improved Robin. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, new and improved Robin. I'd just be like, fucking does this. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Fuck you. Yep. <laughs> And that's a dangerous place to be in uh, because you good. feel you feel validated to be there. Uh, in a but way. all three of us has experienced that, so don't you think that's the natural progression oh, of is, healing? Yeah. So it's just a period that you have to go through to, go to through get it. to the other side well, so, because you see how futile and exhausting that mindset is. Hopefully, and it is not sustainable. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you right now: been there, done that. It ain't sustainable, well, so, so and the, you let it go. So yeah. the, this is a big one when we, when I was thinking about this, and this is this comes up in my in the hospitality when people ask for favors and shit, but when people ask you to do shit, 
you do not need to apologize for saying no. Right. Yes. Yeah. No is right. a full sentence. No full is a full and, sentence. Uh, is a complete I mean, sentence. I, I no mean, is a complete I, I, sentence. I do, I do believe that there's... And again, maybe this goes back to fucking people pleasing a little bit, but like maybe, maybe more than just one word. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah. you know, like... But not my, apologizing. For my it. initial right. fucking reaction is to go, I'm sorry, but, yeah. or I'm right. sorry, I cannot. Unfortunately, it, yeah, we don't have... Yeah. 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 Totally. And it's, instead, you can just be like, I'm unable to do it that day. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, and you, and then it's almost like you're looked at as being a dick if you don't do the apology first. And it's like, right. But, or rude. It, I don't want to be I considered mean, rude. Considered see, rude. This, yeah. see, this or is like the idea of in trouble. That, that sent, is that what I struggle with. In trouble. Yes. Is so fucking difficult. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I was, I was laying down in, in, a, in a yoga class to take a class, right? Mm-hmm. I wasn't there to teach. I was there to take. But it's at the home studio I go to right. across the street. Um, and it's a yin practice. Very quiet, very peaceful, very calm, right? And while I'm laying there, the full class, the teacher's up there guiding. Um, somebody starts knocking on the side door. The doors are locked in the building. We didn't have front desk on this day. So the teacher goes in. That's it, right? Yeah. We lock the doors. <clears throat> well, like 10 minutes into class, this person starts knocking on the side door mm. into the studio. That's like an emergency exit. And so the teacher looks... I look up at the teacher and the teacher looks at me and I'm like, I got this. I'll take care of this, right? You teach your class. So I go over there and I open, <laughs> slide the curtain aside and there's this young lady there and she's like looking at me like I'm the asshole. And I'm like, I just point towards the front door and I go out the studio and I shut the doors and I go and I meet her and she comes barreling in past me and she's upset. And uh, long story short, she thought that she could come in late because she's done it before, but there's been a front desk person. There was not, you know, she thought that I should be there waiting for her. I should be watching cameras. And then I told her, hey, I'm not the teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the class. Yeah. So there's that. Right. Right. Uh, I'm doing you a favor. And then I could, I could see her and she's maybe late teens, early twenties. Sure. Right. And I could see her finally starting to come to like getting her breath. And I'm like, better not namaste the fuck down. Yeah. Yeah. I was was like, this energy ain't coming to this yoga class. And so I, and I, and I look at her, I'm like, and she goes, I don't know what to do now. And I go, okay, we're going to go take class, right? Mm-hmm. You are not in trouble. And I told her that. And as soon as I said that, I'm like, holy shit, that fucking, that sentence, yeah. in trouble. Like, you've done nothing wrong. You did what you felt was right, mm-hmm. right? You now know that this is the policy. Let's put this aside. Go take your class, right? Yeah. Took class, came back afterwards, <laughs> and I just happened to pass her on the way out. Wasn't, <coughs> wasn't seeking her out. And she pulled me aside, and she's like, I had a panic attack out there. And I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. I just needed to get inside this building, and I'm so sorry. And I'm like, it's all good. Yeah. Right? You're good. You, again, you're not in trouble. You did you did what you thought was right. Now you know this, right? right. But it just it's I'm, I've been thinking about that fucking sentence about how much yeah. I think I'm in trouble yep. for the stupidest shit. Yeah. Like if I'm in a car by myself and I accidentally miss my turn and I have to go back around the block, uh-huh. I feel like I'm in trouble. Yes. I feel like somebody is just like the whole block of people walking, <laughs> driving, shopping in the places they can't even see the fucking street. Yeah. Are I heard all about like, that. I heard Adam's about that. Adam's a fucking yeah. dick. Oh yeah. my I heard about god. That yeah, yeah. Yeah. Last week. <laughs> that fucking turn. Like yeah. the fucking blimp goes over right yes. like i feel that in my bones yeah but haven't even realized it until recently wow like there is it's so that inner much. anxiety that i feel like that is the core of where my people pleasing comes from because yeah. if i can placate everybody if i can please everybody then i'll never be in trouble and i'll never feel this feeling mm. and if i can do everything correctly and right and be mm. on time and not be late and be um you know the best employee you ever had or the best daughter or if i can be the best this and uh, and even when I'm not feeling it, as long as you're happy, I, I'd rather be unhappy because I, I don't want to feel because I don't want to be in trouble with you. Yep. Like that is where all of that stems from. Yeah. That that horrible feeling. And then Mandy said to me one time, she was like, "Grown ups don't get in trouble. <laughs> Grown ups have opportunities and they have consequences, or they have sometimes uh, they don't have consequences. Don't even have consequences. <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing. Is in a lot of sorry to cut. No, you're totally right. A, a lot of times, you just deal with a it. lot of. People and shit. I mean, I you know, fucking forty now, so I'm just basing it on this, but basing it on my sample size. But not a lot of people in my circle, with the these people excluded, mm-hmm. I understand who I'm talking to, are really that inward thinking and that critical and trying to actually like push the ball mm-hmm. forward. Myself included. Yeah. Right? You know, I've done some work, and yeah, I quit drinking and shit. But like, you know, it's don't negate yourself. You've yeah. done big work. Yeah. But but like. A lot of people don't fucking kind of do a lot of this stuff and yeah. find it 
like kind of find hard truths about themselves. Yeah. So they literally kind of go through this cyclical nature of fucking misery. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, cool. Yeah. You do this every like year and a half (laughs) because it's just, it's, you know, yeah. And when you don't have consequences, you don't have someone putting you in trouble. Right. You know, or that skill set to fucking put yourself in trouble. Right. Healthily. Healthily. Exactly. Accountability. Right. Yeah. But there's a, no, that was basically there, it. Yeah. There's a study I read recently that kind of piggybacks on this, and it's like there were two questions uh, two questions asked to a 1,000 people. First question was, do you think you've changed in the last 10 years? Mm-hmm. 70% of people said yes, I've definitely oh, changed. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Second question was, do you think you're going to change in the next 10 years, or do you think you found you? Mm-hmm. 70% of people said, no, I'm good. I found me. Mm. What the fuck is that? How no. can you identify that you've changed so much in 10 years, but think that you're not going to continue to change? Well, also, yeah. that you also that's, think it's you're the best version of yourself. Right. That, that's yourself. the other yeah. part. I, I remember hope last this isn't the best version of right. myself. Totally. Like, yeah. And I am so I am so glad I am not the person I was five, 10 years ago. Yeah. I can see the change and the, the, the peace I've gained, but I still hold on to a lot of shit. So if this is the best it yeah. gets, my yeah, fucking yeah. God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, and what, how unexciting of a life. Yeah. If you've reached the peak already, like, yep. there's nothing, I, I love nothing more than to have my aha moments. Those are so exciting for me now. And even when they're stressful or bad or whatever, like, I can look into a moment now and be like, oh, I can take away this from it. Or, oh, I've learned this from it. Oh, I can look at this differently now. Like this, I get this kind of like euphoric sense of like, I get a different perspective Mm. on something. And that's exciting to me. So if those have all ended, and the same with like artists, like artists are always going to be growing and changing if they are good artists. Right. And and like or changing Take their vehicles notes, or help. changing their you know Joni Mitchell was like hey man I don't want to sing anymore oh, I'm going to fucking paint I did yeah I did yeah, it's not good it's not good but you know what yeah, it's we're not all good. on a path and we're all changing <laughs> and growing every fucking day oh I forgot I just love it yeah I did it's I not good did. it's not good it, it exists <laughs> it's there but the even fuck? Joni oh, Mitchell is a growing oh, and changing so human good. being so Fucking so good. God. I was just like, yeah, you're going to need to do a deep dive on that. Uh, and you did. And you're just like, the more yeah. you look. Like, we actually stopped because the more we fucking read, we're like, oh, this just gets worse. I can't do it. just gets worse. There's a quote I I, uh, <laughs> uh, I heard recently. If it's uh, from a Black Thought song. But he, and it kind of talks about this. Like, this, this isn't the pinnacle. Uh, and it's uh, my best years of life behind are still ahead of me. Mm-hmm. Right? Because mm. we always look back and like, oh, there's well, the best I, I, years. It's like, those are still ahead of well, you. Right? Yeah, I, you still have a long the, way to The mentality go, youth is wasted back, on the you know? young. I do kind of believe that to some extent. Oh, I do. You Absolutely. know, uh, but, you know, back to the whole idea of like, you know, people, you know, expectations. And you were kind of mentioning kind of these confidential contracts and, yeah. you know, people not being held accountable and stuff. A lot of times, and I find this with having to remind, you know, closer friends in which I can kind of hold them accountable to some extent, but I'm just sitting there going, I don't know really what you're expecting differently about this person because Mm -hmm. this is what this person does. Right. Like both positively and negatively, but it's just like, yo, most of the time it's negatively, let's be honest, because you're, it's not becoming your business if it's a fucking good thing. And it's like, oh, you know, but it's just like, no, like this is, this is kind of who this person is, you know? There is a really good Bell Hooks quote. It's unfortunate that that's kind of the way, but it's just like, no, I mean, and I'd like to believe that everyone does do this kind of work and reflection, but again, not a lot of people do. Well, and the thing is, is that I also don't want to be the person (laughs) that is expecting the worst out of people. See, that's, yeah. So if they have a tendency... That's what I'm tentative about saying that kind of shit. There's a tendency to have these people in your life, oh, they're going to, they're always doing this. They're They're going to show up late or whatever. Surprise, surprise, this is happening again. Yeah, And that's not a great positive no, mindset not. to be in but this not. this bell hooks quote i remember reading it and it was i think this was kind of the thing that kick started my change in perspective of my intolerance for intolerance it was it's bell hooks quote it says how do we hold people accountable for wrongdoing and yet at the same time remain in touch with their humanity enough to believe that they are they have it to believe in their capacity to be transformed so while yeah. holding space of being like holding them accountable but not having it define them into knowing that if I have the capacity for change, they also do. And if they find it or not is not my responsibility, but I'm always going to give them the chance or in my brain at least to 
surprise and delight. So uh, I, I don't bring up this kind of thought that often, but uh, when people serve hard time mm-hmm. in jail for something that they did, you yeah. know, whatever it is. Obviously, there's we go on the extreme spectrum, and it's like, no, no, fuck those people. Go live in a cave. Right, right. A right. fucking supervised cave in which you're unsupervised in your cave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but... Um, you know, these, these people, men and women, come out of, you know, prison, and then they, you know, go and try to contribute to society, and they're usually branded as such. Mm-hmm. Right. Justifiably or not. But, you know, some of these people maybe are better than they were when mm-hmm. they went in, or about, but, like, if you completely disregard the, and I don't agree with a lot of the prison system, like, you, like then what are we actually doing? I mean, right. again, we are locking up too many people, but, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there is some sort of, if you can't even redeem yourself by serving the time, right. which is kind of how we may, mainly view it, right? you know? Yeah. Like, if you, you know... If you, yeah. Well, I think there's opportunities to look at that does it, You know, does that make sense? I, no, absolutely, like, because, well, no, like, they does. either, we're either going to punish them for the rest of their life, whether they're in jail or out of jail. Yeah, that's kind of my point, So yeah. what's the fucking point yeah. of putting them in jail or or in and, and what you're saying about the prison system, a lot of people are locked up for no fucking reason at all. That's true. That like, are again, completely so there's a wide range of people that I'm not trying to oversimplify totally, this shit, but absolutely. it's just like I understand that there are some people that didn't go get a fucking master's degree when they served their stretch for fucking stealing a car and running it into a fucking building. Yeah. Whatever. You but, know what I'm right. saying? But if you're like, just locking them in a cave yeah. and doing nothing with them and then they get released. You've done nothing to help a community to rehabilitate somebody right. or to give them capacity to be better than they were. For all we know, this so person they've learned could, nothing. Yeah. They're more angry now than ever. I think they've most... done, you know, a terrible thing, and we're just going to release them back to keep doing terrible things. Or I, I think the tendency is to still kind of think that that person's the same. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, there's now, there's, you know, like, and I think that's the bullet, the yeah. main, you know. Yeah, no, totally. And there's, but I think it's interesting now because, you know, we have a society that's entrenched in the penal system, in the prison system. And then yeah. you have now places like Denmark and places in Europe that are, are not, that are doing away with jails, that are doing away yeah, with yeah. legality shit, right? Yeah. And, uh, and by no means am I saying let's jump to that, but it's yeah. now we have established countries on a scale that have a GDP, right? Yeah. That we can look at because those are the qualifiers that this country or other, you know, established quote unquote countries look for. But we have now a, a, a country testing this, yeah. multiple countries testing this idea to see, hey, does that work? Does it not work? How do we still hold people accountable? Are we getting rehabilitation in some kind of way? Um, I we actually, know what we're doing now is not fucking working not here. Working all, so, yeah. yeah. The uh, other podcast, podcast that I do, uh, the Journey podcast, uh, the episode I released um, most recently, I had a couple people on from Yoga Behind Bars. Mm. And one of them was, was in, uh, an incarcerated person at that point in time. And then as they, uh, this person was released uh, and was uh, back into the community, he became a Yoga Behind Bars uh, board member. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Chris, who uh, was on Yoga Behind Bars uh, on, the, on the program. But to hear the, the this beautiful program that on – you know, just saying yoga behind bars, it makes my heart warm, right? Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. They're still very, they the way they were trained, the way they talked about this is they're, these people are animals. You do not make eye contact right. with them. You don't treat them as humans. You don't talk to them. So, and it's yep. like, well, you're deepening that divide. Right. Yeah, and, you're right? not fixing is, anything. Yes, exactly. And like, why not take that opportunity, like the quote, to see their capacity for change. Right. And there are a range of, of people that make mistakes or are in situations, whether it's, uh, uh, what's the nature or nurture. Yep. Some people have mental illness. Right. Some people were yeah. the product of the home they grew up in, the community that they grew up in, the situation that they just weren't even supposed to be there, but they got caught up at the wrong place at the wrong time. Like yep. there's a wide well, range of, of I th- I think things that happen. it's important to note probably also that we're only going to hear about the ones that got out and did more bad shit. Right. Yeah. And then we're going to be like, well, that's what happens. Well, we got to look. It's like, well, we also probably don't hear about the guy who just got the job at the fucking Ace Hardware, met some chick, has a fucking kid, and is now living a fucking great life as an ex-felon. Yeah. Right. You know, literally defined as such, rightfully so. Right. You know what I'm saying? Were, and now you're not. Yeah. You know? 
get but those opportunities. Regardless of their actions, they wow, deserve to be treated prison, like human talk. beings. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it just also says who you are as a, as a person, how you view and treat people that you believe have done wrong. So you can either uh, continue that negativity by de- deepening the divide, like you said. Like, right. treat them like animals. Treat them like they're not human. They've done this bad thing. They don't deserve love. They don't deserve a second chance. They don't deserve this. That doesn't do anything to help you. If you just look at it in selfish terms, right. that's not a cool place for your head to live in, yeah. for to view other people like that. So even if you're just doing it for your own self-preservation to be like, hey, man, I, no matter – just that unconditional love that we can show to each other as human beings who are sharing a planet together. Yeah. You know, like no one deserves to be living in those conditions in those fucking jails. Right. I don't care what you've done. And you can disagree with me and there are some terrible things people have done, but I – I don't want to be the person punishing someone like that. Right. I don't. I don't want that. When yeah. when when we ran background checks at, at at Hook, and I get that, but big company, blah blah. Yeah. Not, you know, and the, we there is problems with you know background checks and employment and shit. I know that's a slippery slope yeah, and whatnot. Is, yeah. I'm not here to open that debate, but uh, I remember the pitch I was giving when I was like, "We're going to run this," and you know, a couple things that are non-starters or like any kind of assault. Theft is another one that's, but it's like, okay, so literally what else could there really be that we would still hire someone? You know what I'm saying? Like, if we're going to be honest, I don't think we did hire any quote felons when we were there, but like, what doesn't meet those two criteria that is going to show up on somebody's fucking record? Yeah. Like, what is the felon that you, that is like, okay like that didn't in your book? Steal, right. that didn't steal and didn't yeah. kick the shit out of somebody or, or use a weapon or something like, you know? Or drugs or whatever. Like, you can drugs. use... Drugs. It would yeah. be drugs. Yeah. Yeah. It would be drugs. We actually had one work release person that I know of that I worked with, and it was at Jillian's, and he was a dishwasher. Real sweet man. He was older, maybe yeah. late 50s, early 60s. Um, came in, washed dishes, went home. Had to go to his halfway house. He had specific times yeah, to yeah, you know, yeah. be out and all that stuff. But he's really sweet. We got to yeah. know him. You know, he actually made. He was a uh, he had some indigenous background of some sort, and he made this like beaded kind of like satchel thing for me. Cool. Very sweet guy, right? And so, like, we created the relationship, not just him and I, but with the staff. And like, the way it worked was when he got off shift, we would call his PO, and then he had a specific amount of time he had to get back to the halfway house, and then he checked in, mm-hmm. right? And if he didn't, he would go back to jail. So he would get off at say nine. And we're like, hey, dude, you want to just play pool for a little bit? Mm-hmm. And so we play pool, and then he'd get off at like we call it like ten thirty. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, hey, you, he's you on just, his way. He's like, yeah. cool, all right, great, right? Yeah, yeah. A fantastic relationship with this guy. Out of nowhere, I don't know what happened. Well, this is self-preservation. Yeah. Something probably just happened, but I get called into the office, and I'm managing at the time. It's me and this, uh, you know, with, within the management team. I get called in the office, and my GM is like, hey, got something to talk about, and I'm like, okay. He goes, um, somebody said that they saw you selling the drugs to um, one of the other managers. And I'm like, huh. And at that point in time, like, I quit smoking weed. Like, I yeah. Like, well, yeah I, that, just, I like, just, like, just come the family. My in trouble shit. trigger like, just got triggered real. Well, just yeah, hearing the story, I, I, I'd be like, yeah. like, did I? Yeah. 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 No, I honestly, I was yeah. like, what the fuck? And I was like, you know, thinking about it, I'm like, no, man, I haven't. No, I quit, quit smoking weed. I quit all that shit. I drink, but that's it, you know? And it was my buddy Jeff. Yeah. So we're like, we have a relationship. And I'm like, what? what is this? And like, where is this coming from? He's like, it was the dishwasher. And I'm like, I can't remember his name, but I'm like, what is going on with that? And so, and I couldn't talk to him about it because it was yeah. confidential, you know? And so it basically, we ha- it just went back to being like by the books. Okay, yeah. you get off work at nine. Here's your fucking, we're calling your PO. And yeah. he kind of looked and like, I kind of looked back at him, and I never really found out what yeah. happened or why he did. But you just did. like, but cool like, dog, yeah, no man. more. Yeah, being, like, yeah, and and yeah, and stuff like that might happen, and it's just it's not like you treated him any unkind. Exactly. Like it, you you didn't punish him. Yeah, You're just like you set no your boundary. Yeah. You've okay. Maybe I can't go this far. Okay, noted. And now we're just going to go back to you being an employee and I'm going to check in with your PO and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. that's what it's going to be. But it's yeah. it wasn't an un- unkind Exactly, transition. yeah. And it wasn't like we were putting like dirty ass like caked on yeah. dishes back there and be like, there like, you go. Right. Leave yeah. the caramel. Leave the caramel <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> you guys made fresh caramel there, right? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I always think about that scene from Monster uh, where uh, uh, oh, Charlie Theron is trying Fuck to get right and is you know 
doesn't have access to any money, has to get a job, and is like going in for this interview she's unqualified for. She's got no work history. She's got no, you know, rental thing. Like she, she has, it should not be in the room, but it's like, what must that feel like when people talk about, you know, being unhoused or, you know, a felon or whatever? Like every person you go to, they're either not going to hire you, they're not going to rent to you, they're not going to listen to you, they're not going to trust you. That would be so defeating for me. I'd be right. like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to keep doing this until I get caught again or, or whatever. I'm branded or, as such. I'll show you this. Yeah. So, you well, know, if this is what was, you think I am, then I'm going to be that thing. Back when I was drinking, there was a lot of fucking shit I did with that. Yeah. You know, you know? and it's, yeah, there's it's a, not good. There's a book I read a while ago about universal basic income, and they were talking about the welfare system. That's by Guy Standing. And he was talking about the welfare system. You know, it's, it's, the, you know, the, the government and the states and the citizens will pat ourselves on the back because we have this assistance system that's there. But we make people, like, basically grovel for it. Right. right? You have to, if you're on the welfare system in the United States, you basically have to go and prove how inept you are as a mm-hmm. human being every time. Yeah. Every month you have to reprove that I can't take care of myself. I need government assistance. This is why I can't take care of myself. Mm-hmm. You're turning down raises because it doesn't give you enough yep. to give, make up the difference. But the raise isn't enough to get you out. Exactly. So you're going so yeah, you to, yeah, keep yourself in poverty. So you, yep, it's yeah. such oh, a fucking fuck. vicious cycle, you know? And but again, you got these politicians and bureaucrats patting themselves on the back, so we took care of our people and we can blah blah blah. Or that like, people yeah, like, say that people are living large off of welfare and yeah, food stamps. Right. Do you know, as someone who has been on food stamps before, who has had had to yeah. do government insurance, the same thing happened. I go, I can either take this five hundred dollar extra job, which will put me over for the month, but that five hundred bucks is not as much as the benefits I would be getting right. if. If I if I deny it and I can still get these things and I can government yeah so or I like so I'm gonna deny myself uh, more money (laughs) like so I yeah and it's it's just or or thinking about well if I get this job that's gonna be too much to get me out of it but it's not so much that it's I'm gonna have to get insurance again so I'll be back to zero and it's no one's living large off of no one's do you know how hard it is to take advantage of the system they are <laughs> they are on your ass you yeah. have to apply you have to go and talk to somebody oh, every month you have to email so your tax records like it is not an easy thing yeah. i never was able to during covid i got the fucking cheese yeah. you know some people had some fucking tough time getting it yeah. i didn't but like when i got fucking laid off i went and applied for jobs jobs i didn't fucking want but like try i never got one fucking check went to interviews put yeah. on fucking suits and shit like oh, oh, boo, boo. Uh-huh. you know checking yeah. boxes so if they ever fucking <clears throat> did it right yeah. You know, yeah. didn't get one fucking dime. Right. You know, all I wanted was like a month. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, it's gonna fuck do, being nice. It's gonna be yeah, the, I was going to be nice. a GM at a counter service burger place in South Lake Union. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I applied at a, <laughs> a, a, a candle making factory. Oh, shit. Oh, you right. like that. Yeah. I felt like I would like it. But then, <laughs> uh, well, it was just I part of, it. yeah. I, I think it, the the pay wasn't enough and the hours were kind of crazy. But like I was like, yeah, I could dip because it reminded me of when we used to dip the dip Maker's the Mark <laughs> bottle or yeah. the beer bottles. And I was like, yeah, I could fucking do that. God, I literally, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I bring it up at every podcast. Just the greatest job you ever had. <laughs> just every just time, like just, just every like, time. Worked next to three people for fucking two <laughs> weeks. Couldn't pick them out of a fucking lineup the <laughs> next tell day. No, nope, <laughs> couldn't tell you their name. Oh, I love so that. good. All right, well, we'll leave it at that then. We'll Be kind to time. yourselves, and kindness will just happen after that. There you go. Love that. See you.